Hi all, right back with more Fields of Fire. This is the Normandy Campaign Mission 1, Trail Air Offensive. Uh, we're just about to start turn 7, is that right? Yeah, just about to start turn 7. And uh, we're just kind of cruising, breezing through it. Uh, yeah, I just seem to have got off a walkie, which is a bit of a shame to sort of... Yeah, I've, I mean, I played this game quite a few times, and I played this mission probably quite a few times because it's a, it's the simplest one. And okay, you should be able to get through it without any issues. I dare say you could have the opposite from me and really bad luck and have it and struggle. But uh, I've never had as an easy as 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 easy a time as this. Um, just the lack of contacts and the contacts that we've had. Two of them have disappeared. The one shot that we the one bit of damage that we've done. Drew, I drew a CC result, uh, double casualty on a three-step unit. The other one was a fire team, and then we, uh, I think we scared it off as well, didn't it? It fell, it fell back. Um, so yeah, although you've seen some of the things that happen, it was a wee bit of shame that not more showed up. And but hopefully, I move on to the second mission. I know I mentioned the last video. Uh, sorry, this is part. This is part ten. Yeah. I mentioned in the last video, I think, that I've, because nothing had really happened, that maybe, like, redo this one. But I don't think we need to do that. Um, there was a, quite a few blunders in this as well, but I think most of the errors I have been an, able to manage to squeak through and, like, they're not errors that make me feel like, oh, God, I've got to start again. I mean, at first, when I realised I wasn't putting the trenches out, I thought, and I did, I actually reset things and then looked at the video footage further on, which was what I should have done first before resetting things, then realised that, oh, I've got away with it. The, the results were the same and it wouldn't have been any anything different. OK, there's two or three things in there that some of you might say, well, that that should have happened, that should have happened. And, and that's right, but you're always going to make some mistakes in these games, so if you can keep them to the sort of minimum that it's still shouldn't really affect the result by much, you know. That's about the best you can really do, I think. Uh, okay, but we've still got to play out turns 7, 8, and 9, uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So, uh, is it 7? Have I moved the turn marker on? I think I have, I don't know. So we've got four turns still to go. Which does mean four event cards, and, uh, you know, maybe we'll, maybe the, they'll get some revenge and counter-attack us, so... Um, we shall see. Um, but what we can try and do now, I suppose, is... Yeah, I, I was wondering about later on about finishing with litter teams and even assault teams, if it was going to be better to end up with that. I suppose we should look at the experience side of things, maybe, and maybe see how things progress on in the next mission, and also maybe just a glance at the briefing booklet to see what experience points we get. I think we've looked at this already. Um, again, remember, this is old content, so whether there's new stuff... Um, these these mission books are all getting redone as well, so um, that's good. Um, so secure the primary objective card, secure the secondary objective card, Um Right, that's let's find out the 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 meaning of them again. The word in, uh, give me a second. Yeah, so that is on page eight. I'm still I'm still using my tablet. Um, I'm hoping to get that binder today and if, uh, get all the rule book put together. And I'd really like to set out a space where I can open the rule book because um, just to show um others that have maybe tried this game before just how they've improved the rule book. Yeah, that would be good. Um, I know I've showed bits of it and then I sort of stopped doing that a bit but you, you do want to play the game as well and I'm not here to try and teach everything but um, every time I'm reading a rule for myself there's no harm in me just adjusting the camera slightly it's if I can create the space because so, it is going to be a big folder so I'll see if I can work something out but I need to get the that binder first anyway anyway here's what we're looking for we were particularly looking for secured there so a secure card is a cleared card that is also friendly occupied and also adds at the bottom ignore any casualties of VOF markers on a card which 
when determining if the card is unoccupied or cleared. So what's the definition of cleared? A uh, card is cleared if it is one that started the mission with a PC marker or a scheduled PC marker in the case of defensive missions. Well, we weren't playing defensive, so... And has been cleared of both marker and enemy units. Um, so it needs to be friendly occupied. It needs to start with have started with a PC marker, and it needs to be the PC markers away, the enemy are away, and we are there sitting ourselves. And remember, casualties don't count. So you can see here that the PC markers away. This is our primary objective. PC markers away. There's no enemy units, and we've got friendly units occupying that. So we have that card secured at the moment. Remember, we need to run the, the, all, the all the turns of the game. So we need to go right through t uh, to 10 turns. Um, this is also, I mean, it's just an assault team that's on it, but um, it is occupied by us. It had a PC marker on it, and it's gone, and there's no enemy markers on it. So that's good as well. And in fact, the attack position, attack, position is also uh, secured as well so um, we just need to remember to leave a unit I see me make a blunt I made a blunder with that before where I moved everything off the card and then it was like oh that's not secured anymore because secured does say cleared and friendly occupied yeah I did that I did that in the previous mission and then when I went to check my experience points at the end I thought don't I've not left a unit on the card so it just meant that the card wasn't wasn't secured. So you can see we're we're wanting to get as much of this as possible. So um we're we're sitting at five points there, four there, and three there. Now clear another card that had a PCA marker on it. Um now there's there's something that can catch you out here. Clear another card that had a PC A marker on it. Clear another card that had a PC. B. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what you got to watch. It's another another card uh, for the PC A marker. Well, yeah, it does have, it does have an effect. So and clear means uh, if it started with a PC marker and it's both being cleared of both marker and enemy units. See, I don't. That's when you read that, it's the same as secured, is it not? What's the difference between cleared and secured then? Let's look at that again. Yeah, I think that's what got me before, didn't it? So a card is cleared if it is one that started the mission with a PC marker and has been cleared of both marker and enemy units. Ah, the thing that it doesn't have is it's friendly occupied. Ah, okay. So just just what I said there when I when I made my blunder in a previous attempt at this, um, I had I had the card cleared. But I didn't have a friendly unit on it, and that would have made it secured. That's right. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, so just going back to um, this clear, another card that had a PCA marker on it. And what that can sometimes catch you out with, I believe this is, uh, if you remember, our A's were all on these four cards. Well, this card is the attack position, and we're getting three points for it if we secure it. So when it says clear another card that had a PCA marker on it, you can't count that one. So, however, we have cleared all three of these. Now, we need to do this to to complete the mission, but, however, that's you're getting points for them. And then the next bit is clear another card that had a PCB or C marker. Well, again... These two are not going to count for that because these are the primary objective, primary objective, secondary objective. But this would have had a B on it. This had a B on it. So we get points for they two. And then the Cs will get points for all four of them. Uh, you get one per card. So pretty sure that's how it works. But it can catch you out, I think. I think the first thing you, you sort of think, you count them all. But you can't count the attack position, uh, primary and secondary objective twice, if you like, you know. Capture enemy prisoners. Well, we're hoping to be able to do that. I'm just going to look at that next. Um, capture an enemy... Oh, sorry, no, not enemy prisoners. Capture an enemy casualty. That's what we're hoping to be able to do. There's two of them there. But I get the feeling I've got to use a unit to take them. Yeah, so I might need another unit. But we'll, we'll see. We've not, there's nothing else threatening us, so we've got the time to, like... Uh, perform a successful grenade attack. Well, haven't done that. Uh, and you actually get one point per attack, so 
it is advantageous to try and do that throughout the mission. Um, I've not really had the opportunities to do it, so there's nothing showing up. But we'll see. We'll see how it finishes. You never know. Uh, complete an HQ event marked with an asterisk. That's some of them up there have have an asterisk on them, and if you complete them, you're going to get a point for each event that you complete. And then successfully evacuate a friendly casualty. Well, we've, we've evacuated two of them. And then we've got one more up there. Ah, yeah, we can actually try and go and get him now, can't we? Because the, the mortars went away. So uh, so there's something else to try. It would give us an extra point. Um, is it possible to do it in the turns? Well, we've got four turns. Uh, one, we move across to there, pick it up. Two, we move into there. Three, we move into there and drop it off. So there you go, and we can do that. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, I think what, sh what I should look at now is just some rules that how we then move on to the next mission. Um, so just to give you an idea, is it worthwhile me trying to put this assault team back into the squad, shall we say? Because you can... Uh, what is that? Uh, re reconstitute a squad? No, no, that's not right, is it? Wait till I find it. Uh, to be honest, I think I can use the action menus player aid for this. Uh, give me a sec though, I need to go and pause for a little bit. Uh, right, been on pause a little bit there, so where was I? I, was, I think I was about to look at this, wasn't I? Or was it like, it'll be a rally action? Well... It could be a rally action, it could be a command and control action. Yeah, see, reconstitute. Oh, that's a platoon HQ or the CEO HQ. Um, so, my guess is it probably is a rally action. Attempt to reconstitute a squad. So, two or three unpinned assault or fire teams. I ah, supplement a squad. Any good order, two step squad and an unpinned fire or assault team. There you go. So that would cause one action, it's automatic, and that would put the squad, basically it would take that assault, if this assault team was, and beside this one three platoon here, it would just join it back up and this would become a three step squad again. So I'm, but I'm gonna have a look at in between, I'm um, just noticing, I'm looking up the contents there, you've got gaining experience during the mission on page 79, and then between mission sequence, Page AA, using experience points, AA replacements, AA other losses, is, it's going to tell us all in there, I think, so page 79. So have a look at that in a minute. Um, and just uh, something that it's difficult to get your head around while I, while I was thinking about it there is, this 1-3 platoon, I don't know where this assault team come from, but it never remembers where it came from. Any lat doesn't remember where it comes from. That's right, isn't it? Hopefully I'm telling you the right things here. This is how I see it anyway. So this litter team doesn't doesn't know that he's... He, he might have originally been part of 1st Platoon, but he doesn't know or he doesn't care. So when he joins back up, this assault team might have come from 1st Platoon, but he can quite easily now become... Uh, you know, he could join up to, f to take that back to three steps because they don't, they don't remember where they were. And uh, I found that difficult at first because they didn't... Well, just, I didn't grasp that. Eh? And I think when you first start playing it, it's maybe one of the things that could make you think, and right, okay, so he's still part of, you know, this is still, uh, you know, we we split split that off. What is that? We, um, uh, what is that again? Detach a team. We detach this assault team from first platoon. First one, one of, one, one first squad, first squad of first platoon. Uh, you know, so he's still attached to that. Well, he, he's not. He just doesn't... He, that doesn't matter after that. And then... Um, well, they're... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. They explain it. They explain it in the rules pretty well and it makes some sense. But you can see gameplay-wise as well to track this as being part of First Platoon still would be a, a bit of a pain. Eh? So whether it's abstracted slightly to deal with that or... Like I say, I do think it gives a good explanation of why that happens in the rules... Um, uh, while you're reading through it, you'll you'll maybe find that part. Um, okay, let's let's look at um, page seventy nine and eighty then. All right, so there it starts off playing a campaign part, um, rule twelve. 
Uh, tells you tells you about that. We won't we won't go in that. Just that last paragraph there though. In between in between missions, you will rebuild your company with remaining lats and replacement steps. You may spend experience points on promotions for surviving steps and skills. And this is what I'm thinking. If we've already joined our lats back up, will it benefit us any? I, I get the feeling it might not really, but it might it might a little. Uh, so then gaining experience during a mission, the company receives experience points by accomplishing tasks during the course of a mission, which we just showed. The mission instructions indicate how many points each task is worth. Possible mission tasks may include securing key terrain, evacuating casualties, taking prisoners, and so on. Uh, the mission takes place over several attempts. All experience gained during one attempt can be assigned during the setup for the re-attempt. Um, yeah, that's if you fail the mission and have to do it again. Often you're asked to clear secure cards, um, and then it tells you about a clear card. But I mean, we've just been through all that. Um, you do not get points for a card or card area that's cleared during a mission, but then reoccupied by the enemy before the mission's over. And you cannot get double points for clearing a location twice. Ah, yeah, so if it becomes occupied again, then you clear it again. You don't score twice for it. Then the mission tally your experience points. You will use these to patch up your company and award promotions and skills before the next mission. Um, yeah, I want somebody, Shania, mentioned something about the skills card. We've not got that. I think it is in the rules somewhere, though. The skills part of it. Not something I... Well, I'm not saying I didn't use. I did use it. Um, anyway... So between mission sequence, perform these activities in the listed order between missions. Now it's, it's quite tricky to do this. I remember that, this in the replacement part. There was a, a video, one of the first videos I ever watched. It's probably back when this was first released. Probably, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or something. And the guy plays through this scenario and um, he goes through this procedure at the end. And... Um, it was very useful, I found, to get to grasp what was happening. Um, my guess is that the new rules, um, hopefully in here, are going to deal with this better. Uh, just looking to see if it's got any kind of examples. There's, there's something there that looks new. Yeah. I think that's. I think that's trying to. I think that's trying to show you in a better way how it all. Uh, how it all joins together. Oh no, this this was this was in the original rules, but this it wasn't like that. That looks better. Um, uh, here you go. Here you go. Here's some examples. Reconstitution. Look, this is what you need because I don't think this was in the f the first edition of the rules. Sorry, it's not first edition. Actually, I, I had it was second edition, wasn't it? Um, just glancing here at the. Yeah, between missions, it's it's really not got any of this, and the, the this is what's going to shine because this was difficult to get to grasp. This, um, for me, it took me a while, and it was like I needed to watch that guy's video. Uh, I think somebody else did it as well. Um, what is it? The guy that does he is it counter attack? Um, he done a video push with this as well. Um. And it was helpful to see that at the end. Um, so I guess what 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 I'm just trying to find out just now is, um, is there any benefit? I've got people in doing work just now. We're getting a bathroom done up, so there might be some background noise and whatever. Um, rally any web? See, that's rally any weapons teams. But this is between the mission, isn't it? Okay. You know what, I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to go and do it and then we'll find out and hopefully when we take on the next mission we'll be prepared for in between. We'll say, ah, if we'd done this, if we'd done that. Um, at the end of the set, so we keep completing mission, company may see, yeah, you get replacements as well. I don't think any of this is, I don't know. See, reduce all other lat units to green experience level. So... Yeah, that, that's what I want to say that, yeah, I can see it now. Hang on. What I think we want we want to do this for, because this 1-3 squad, uh, the first squad, the third platoon here, is, um, where's, my, where's my stuff? 
as uh, the squads were all wine level, right? Now, this assault team's a wine, so fair enough, but I think it just did say that you reduce... Rally any weapons teams, spotters and HQs on their fire team side to the good order side. Reduce all other lat units to green experience level. Except those set aside as prisoner guards. Um, so although this is a wing unit just now, my, my understanding is that that then becomes a green step. Um, and this certainly would become a green step. However, if we can put that back into that squad, it's at wine quality. And we'll want to repair a, a step of this come before we go into the next mission. So we'll need to find another step to add. So that step could be added to that. But that's all costing us. That will be part of the replacement or experience points that we use to do it. So if we can do it in the mission, I think it is going to benefit us. So we'll, we'll find out and we'll just do what we can do. Right, okay, I've went on enough. That's 20 odd minutes going on. And uh, we're still not getting started. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I keep, uh, you know, I'll do this. I'll do this all the time. Um, when it when I'm rabbiting on about, I like to put some comment in the header before you get to watch it. But not for this, but I think this is the explanations and what we're talking about here are fine. Um, okay, and I'm going. I'm going to try and keep setting them out like this because I, I like that better. I think it's nice so you can see everything. I was watching back and a big stack of units, you know, and my big fingers are getting in the way to look through them. You can see exactly what's going on here. I'll just pause the camera if I'm moving them about and and tidy it up before I start recording again. And I think it'll look better. Um. Okay, so turn seven. Yeah, I didn't draw any cards yet. I've not done anything, have I? No, I didn't. I've not started. Did I draw for an HQ event? I don't think so. Ah, give me a sec. Uh, right, okay. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's good. We are on turn seven, just started. And I just checked the last card that was in the discard pile. Just watched the last bit of footage. Uh, it was the attempt to try and find the contact again. And we tried an A. The A here, wasn't it? Seven card draw and never got anything. And then the B here, five card draw and we never got anything. In between the two though, we're drawing the shuffle card when we drew this. So that was kind of fortunate because then basically we got to shuffle the deck after after drawing seven cards without a contact, uh, you know, result. Uh, okay, so let's get um, our uh, friendly HQ event, man. Let's just get our sequence of play handy. Just I'll just keep this up aside for myself. I don't think you need to see this as long as I'm looking at it. Um, if you want to follow along, then fair enough. So, friendly HQ event. Let's go. There is not one. Well, it's not that one we're worried about. We're now worried about the enemy ones. Cause, um, well, I say worried. You know what? Bring it on. We need something. <laughs> we need something to do. So, um, Right. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, no defensive missions, so friendly command phase. BNHQ is not on the map, so we activate... He is in communication with the COHQ, however, so we activate the COHQ. Um, just looking, where is the COHQ? Okay, we're not in communication with second platoon then. But again, we could do the same as what we've done the last time. And I think that was okay. You know, um, oh, to be honest, I could move the COHQ first, then activate each three platoon. Then I'd be in line of sight each platoon. So probably do that. It cost me an extra point because I'm having to move first. Um, but he's got what? He's got two saved. He is not undercover. Um, the contact level is con uh, contact. Sorry, the current activity levels contact and he is green so there's a minus one to this oh that's bad right well remember they get a minimum of one on that so he does still get one uh okay that's put a spanner in the works isn't it because we've only got three then again do we really need to be doing what's things well looking at the platoon HQ numbers, first has got three, second has only got one, and third has got two. 
Um, and where, where he's sitting just now, let me see. I'm a second. Yeah, I was just away. Just a way to try to find out there again. Uh, this was something that come up uh, originally. I actually looked up BGG thread on BGG, and another bit that was found confusing was that if the CEO staff can activate the platoons, and uh, basically, um, there's a bit, there's quite a big thread and maybe a bit chat about it, and it's how it's looked at in the sequence of play, and. Um, uh, one of the previous developers, Ricky Gray, he used to answer all the questions back when I played it at first. Um, he was always there. Like I said, designer, not so much uh, around, but he used to answer all the questions. Now we've got a new a new gang to do that, which is great. Um, and he basically uh, finalised it with a comment that um, staff cannot, act under, uh, under any circumstances, activate platoons. But in HQs, period. That's it. Um, because when you look at it in the sequence of play, the battalion HQ activates the COHQ, right? Um, so he's now activated. Um, he can then activate any any platoon HQ or CO staff within his line of sight and communication. But once once that's been done. You then move on to the um, the platoon HQ CO staff impulse, um, so, and and that's the only time that the platoons can be activated. So the CO HQ, the sorry, the COXO and the first sergeant cannot then activate a platoon HQ. Um, and we've only we've never activated any of the CO staff, but if we did, if I've activated it here just now, right? And then we moved on to, let me just show you on that, just in case. This is a tricky bit to grasp as well, but, um, so we've done the B, the BN, where are we? We've done 3.3.1A, BNHQ impulse. BNHQ is not in the map, so we activate the COHQ, we've done that. Then the COHQ impulse, this comes next, you've got to go in this order, you can't mess about that. If activated by the BNHQ, draw an action card and give it the modified number of activated commands. Save those commands or expend them and any save commands on units up to the maximum per day and per experience level. And I would just... Yeah, sorry, jump around there and give a better sort of reading. Obviously, that's just in the sequence of play. Here is the COHQ impulse in the rule book. It's on page 18. And the rule 4.1 commands. A lot of stuff in there of, that are useful. Um... So skip by the first bit, really. That's just telling you what I've done. Yeah, it says, so subject to limitations of the 4.1.3 COHQ commands, including previously saved commands, are now spent on orders to itself and any friendly subordinate units in play and in communication, including activating platoon HQs and CO staff. Or they may be saved. So let's just say we activate first platoon, second platoon, but we don't activate third platoon, but we activate the XO. So we've not got third platoon activated and we've not got the first sergeant activated. So then we go on the platoon HQ CO staff impulse. You select any of the activated platoon HQ or CO staff. Let's say I activate the, the XO, thinking, right, because he can maybe then activate the third platoon. Well, you can't do that. Um, it says, uh, so you draw a card, get the number of commands, subject to limitations, activated platoon HQ, CO staff may now expend commands, including save commands, on orders to itself or any friendly subordinate units employee in a communication, or they may be saved. There's no mention there of activating, um, that they can activate anything else. Uh, so you can see there, it, it doesn't happen. And then, if you move down to this part, which... Sorry, am I showing you that? No, I'm on the other side. Sorry. Um, <laughs> where was I? Uh, yeah, I was, I was just reading this part. Um, yeah, well, I'll read it again. Subject to limitations of 4.1.3, the activated platoon HQ slash CO staff may now expend commands, including save commands, on orders to itself or any friendly subordinate units employee in communication, or they may be saved. So you, you, don't, you don't get to... 
activate anything within that step and then after you've finished you flip them over uh, to their completed side and then you select the next activated HQ and repeat the process. So you can see that there's no way of activating of the C even though third platoon is subordinate to um, uh, the CO's XO he still can't activate them. The COXO can still not activate third platoon. Pretty sure that's that's how it works. Um, and then this part is an initiative segment. So if you don't activate the COHQ, if he's not in communication, or whatever reason he can't be activated, use um, use you have to use the initiative part of it. Um, and initiative commands, yeah. Subject to limitations, COHQ commands, including previously seen commands, may be expended on orders to itself or any friendly subordinate units in play and in communication, or they may be saved. Again, no chance to activate anything. That's the COHQ within the initiative segment. So it's further on in the sequence of play. So if you're going to activate your platoon HQs, you need to do it at this step, at this step here, and it needs to be done by the COHQ. Okay, so... That's what I was just looking at, because obviously you could start thinking here, uh, as as I did, um, but then thought, no, wait, we, we can't do that, and I just needed to go through that and look and double-check. Because <laughs> um, you could sort of say to yourself, you know how I'm saying the COHQ, at the moment he's only got three commands, we've just activated them. If I move them up there to be able to be communicating with all of my platoons, I've only got two commands left, then can't activate them all. So then I started thinking, right, can the XO not be involved here? Can he not activate? No, they can't activate. That's We should just like have it like that. The COXO or First Sergeant cannot activate any platoons. The one that could do it is the COHQ or the Battalion HQ if he's on the map. No, I think he would just activate the COHQ anyway, wouldn't he? I don't think, I don't think even he could activate platoons as well. So I think, I think that's right. By all means, somebody correct me if I've got that wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, yeah, so I started thinking, well, if I activate this XO here, then move him up, and then could he then activate? But no, you can't do that. can't do that. So we've got three commands, unfortunately. So who did I say... Who, well, who do we want to do the most, really? Um, well, I did suggest that this... Somebody move and go and get this casualty. So that means second platoon. They've got only got one command. So probably wouldn't mind activating them. If I'm going to activate them, I kind of need to move the COHQ here. And then, well, let's just do that then, Grant. Because you're going to do that, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to move the COHQ use one point and I'm going to move them up here and I'm going to move them under this cover marker. I'll just tag them. So hopefully that looks... I know he's sort of... Well, Kim, the better idea might be to keep them in two lines together like that. That might be better. So that's one command. I've got two left. And of course, he he's under that cover marker but he is exposed as well. Um... Right, now he can communicate with all his platoons. So he's going to activate second platoon. We know that for sure. So that's one command to activate second platoon. Who had one save command. And then I just need to decide. I think it's probably going to be, well... See, third platoon's got two save commands. Mind you, first platoon's got three save commands, Grant. Uh I'm um, not sure. I'm not sure what it is we want to really do. We're talking about trying to get this assault team back into the squad, maybe. And there's an assault team here back into the squad. So... Um, well, we can't, can't attach both of them. We've only got one space in that squad, so the other one would have to come from there, wouldn't it? Uh, and then we've got the letter team that's away down here. But I'm hoping to bring it up and this first sergeant might be able to do something with that. I think he's capable of trying to rally that. Um, 
I don't think it really matters. The first platoon guys are undercover, so should I just leave them be? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still I'm still a bit wary about all these units undercover. Um, I, it's gonna yeah, it's gonna bite me in the bum at some point. Because if they, I mean, if we got a counter attack event right now and they're all sitting undercover, I mean, I'm not quite. I, I can't quite remember what happens with the counter attack, but yeah, maybe this is something to to kind of worry about about being under the cover. I think so because the only threat, the only thing that can really, well, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think the only thing that can really screw us up here as if they get a counter-attack event and then this stack of units being under this cover marker would not be good okay I'm going to I'm going to activate first platoon HQ as well because they've got the three save command so that's COHQ spent all his commands he's nothing saved and first platoon is now activated as well um okay so, we're second platoon, um, well, that's not true, we could, we could move this unit down to here, but then we really want it up here to be able to command it, but to get up there, we're going to have to have an, an initiative to bring it up there, aren't we? Well, somebody's got to get the casualty, and we know we can have anybody that... I wonder, here's a thought. Nah. And remember, you're you're talking about moving this down and down here, Grant. Did I not say I could do that in like one, two, three turns? Well, each one of the moves is going to, be, well, apart from the first one, is going to be under his initiative. Unless we take this, the platoon HQ with us, of course. Uh I suppose, I suppose that's a thought. But then it does mean then it's two commands. And when you do a platoon move, the whole platoon has to move. You can't sort of say, I'm just going to take second platoon in this, this squad with me. If, you, if it's a platoon move, you all move. However, if I'd be moving two units, it's going to cost me two points anyway. I don't know. I mean, this is all to try and get one experience point. <laughs> You know, maybe I should just see and let the initiative take its. But if I did, if I did take it with me and we came into this card here, almost said hex again. Um. Then that's close to that. In fact, we could do a detour, across to that, to then join this assault team up with the squad that we bring down, and then bring it down there, and that would be like one two, three, four turns, which we've got, just. And that would have that squad all fully fitted. The assault team goes away. Or we drop our casualty off. We get the point for that. <sighs> that that counter-attack happens. That could backfire if a second platoon HQ's up there. Well, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Just just to see. We've not really been challenged by anything. So... Yeah, you're going to be spending... Oh, hang on, this is second platoon. Yeah, well, I need cards. I need to get some actions first. Yeah, it could depend on what we get, because we've only got one action saved. One command saved. So, and third platoon is not active, so it's going to have to just sit tight. Okay, that's fine, though. Right, well, let's, let's see what second platoon gets. So, is he undercover? No. Great. So, he gets a minus one of this. So, we need a big number here. We get a reshuffle. So we draw again before we reshuffle. And we get a four. That's good. So it was three though. So three plus one. We've got four. That should probably do actually. Right, I'll shuffle the deck. Right, so deck I'll shuffle up. And just looking at this again, if we do take this weird kind of decision to do this, just because we feel like there's no threats on the map. While we're here, here, or here, we can still get back to that card to our platoon if, uh, if need be. Um, yeah, because I don't want to take the whole platoon with me <laughs> on this rescue mission, <laughs> taking this uh, casualty back. Um, 
Well, it's, it's twofold. I'm doing that and I'm trying to do that as well. But to be honest, third platoon here could probably deal with that. And it's going to be like two actions, two actions, two actions. Yeah, and we're going to have to pick that guy up. We're going to have to do something with that before we get back. So it's going to be quite costly. I dare say in between that, we might get general initiatives. So uh, what you might want to do is not pick this guy up right away in case you've got a spare general initiative to use. Uh, okay, right, uh, this, this could be done, but let's spend one command and let's send... Now, he he was part of this platoon as well. The reason he was down there was I think they were all under cover. Or no, I think they were all exposed and he was not. Something. So he's now part of them. So I'm going to take the one, um, one command to put him... to move him in the Orchard Grove and he'll be exposed. And I'm going to then... Controversially, move the second platoon HQ with them. Uh, and that'll be another point. I'll just put that in between. So, second platoon. So, he's still got two commands left. Uh, they can't obviously move any further. But what I mean, initial, my initial thought was let's pick that up. Um, but, but, but. Um, if I happen to draw a high general initiative draw this turn, I might not have a uses for it because, you know, I don't really need to search for cover or anything like that. So I don't have great uses for it. So then I could use that to to um, pick him up with the squad. And if I don't, I've got the two commands still saved from second platoon. So I'm going to have the, the ability next turn to just pick him up and then carry on moving with him. Um, okay, so I'm going to save the other two commands. Yeah, this might, this might be a bit dumb, but uh, I suppose it lets you see some things working. Um, so our other, other platoon is first platoon, and that's then they are. And yeah, my concern was that these are all under the cover marker anyway. Um, do I really want that? Um... I'm not so sure I do. I mean, I might leave the platoon HQ, uh, but then again, then he can of communicate with his, with his um, guys, can he? Uh, right, pause and think. Uh, right, guys, just noticed a slight bit of errata. It's not a huge big deal, but just a slight misprint on the sequence of play here, I think. Um... Where are we? Uh, the capture segment, uh, the third bullet, the uh, three point five point one capture segment. Enemy casualties on unoccupied and friendly occupied cards are captured as per eight point fifteen. Enemies do not capture casualties. Well, it's not a big deal, I know, but it's eight point fifteen point one, eight point fifteen. Uh, as prisoners, I mean, yeah, is it is it a big deal? It's it's the next part. But, um, you know, I don't know. I dare say this stuff's all been put together as well. But, um, yeah, it's not a biggie. Uh, I was able, it's, it's the next step. But I'm, ass I'm assuming it should say 8.15.1. That's all. That's just what I was saying. Uh, so, yeah, and this is what I've been looking for. Um, in offensive mission or combat patrol, enemy casualties are automatically captured if the card is unoccupied. No other enemy units or PC markers or friendly occupied at the end of the mutual capture and retreat phase. Yeah, so we're going to get them anyway. So, yeah, we don't need to do nothing with them. That assault team's going to sit there and get them. Um, I'd like to join that assault team up, but... That does kind of mean... Well, why don't you... Again, see, to, to do that joining up, you need I need an HQ or staff. Well, why don't you get the COXO up there to do that? Yeah, let's do, let's get him working for that. Rather than split the platoon up, you know? I mean, to be honest, this if the COXO could have done this job with this platoon, it could have done that. 
So uh, that does mean we're not ready to move the COXO yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use... Have I drawn cards for the first platoon yet? No, here. He had three to start with, didn't he? He had, he had three, so I'm not even drawing a card yet. And he's still showing in the save, but that's where I'll leave them. If they were up here, it'd been, cards would have been drawn. Right, so first platoon HQ, he is undercover, but he's green. So plus one, minus one, and we get a three. So he gets three more, he's got six. So yeah, we kind of need to do something. Then. I'm not sure what. <laughs> okay. Well, my thinking had been, initially I was going to take the first platoon HQ across there and try and join that assault team up, but when I've seen that I could bring this XO up to do that job, on saying that, Grant, you could do that right now, couldn't you? And you've just got six points. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's use one action to send that across. And... Then, do we want to do anything else for that? I don't think so. Who did we, who's this that we brought up? Ah, oh, COHQ, yeah. Okay, that's, that's fine. He's still going to be in communication with first platoon and third platoon. Not however second platoon, he's, he's away, off, away on a mission. Um. Yeah, so I'll use one to move the, that squad. And then I'm going to use one to move the first platoon HQ as well. And they're both going to be exposed. So that's me down to four. So now we're going to attempt to... Uh, actually, I don't think it's an attempt, is it? I think this is an automatic. Should I look this up in the book just in case? Oh, you know what? I won't. I don't think these have changed. Maybe the guys might have said already, because I have been looking at this just to keep, get things a bit easier for myself. Um, so it's um, supplement a squad, I think. So it costs one, it's automatic, and it needs to be any HQ or staff that originates it. Any good order, two-step squad, and an unpinned fire or assault team. And... Um, yeah, I kinda I kinda do need to know what <laughs> just to be sure what it does. So I need maybe I'll look at it on the rule book. So it's four point two point three H. Yeah, why don't I just read it all? I'm missing the bit, am I? Not? Well no. No, it doesn't give you the description here, does it? It doesn't give you the details on this. That's what's missing, yeah. So I kinda did. So looking at the rule book. Uh, H, their supplement squad, it's one, it's automatic, any HQ or staff, so all that's up to now, good. Any good order, two to three step squad, and an unpinned fire or assault team, well that's exactly the same. However, this is a bit that's missing from the play raid, which is, I mean, I think it's a space issue. So, maybe you're expected to, to kind of know what these do, don't you? Uh, so it says, remove the team from play and add the step to the squad, simple as that, and it's automatic. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend... This is the first platoon, isn't it? We're going to spend one more command, taking us down to three. And we're going to supplement the squad. So my guess... Well, he's still going to be... I'm, basically, we're just moving that away. We're taking that away. And we're flipping this over to a three-stepper again. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it like that. And obviously, these still, still are exposed. Okay, just change it a bit, a little bit that way, make it a bit clearer. Uh, so you still got three commands left, and then you could go searching for cover there. That's, that's not, not a terrible idea, is it? I remember, it's not both of them that go under the cover though. But you could then, no you can't actually. Well, what you need to do is let the squad do the search and f seek for cover and then move the first platoon under the cover as well. And uh, we've got three commands left. Should we do that? Maybe, because that's going to be just... Well, no, it's four steps under the... It'd be four steps under the cover marker, wouldn't it? 
well, let the, let the squad, let the squad go under the cover, but then you can't communicate with them. <laughs> See, it's a, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, isn't it? It's, like it's got a good and it's got a bad. Well, to be honest, it's got two bads because too many steps under a cover can be dangerous. And the other bit is if some are under cover and some are not, communication issues. And then the good is, obviously, it's a plus one. It's only a plus one, though. You know, it's not... If it's a plus three, if it was a strong building, then maybe, but... Uh, so it kind of means that if I do find the cover, I then should move the first platoon under, and that means spending two more points to do that. Do I want to do all that nonsense? Oh, yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? So we're going to search for cover then. Uh, sorry, seek cover. And I'm going to use a squad to do that. I can do that, can I? Um, sorry, hang on. The attempt to seek cover. Any HQ or staff needs to be originator. Any good order unit not under a cover marker and the card has not. So that's the recipient. Yeah, okay. And then I want to say we can still move on the card while being exposed. Uh, move within a card I'm looking for. Oh, well, move to or from cover. It just says any good order unit. It doesn't mention not exposed. Uh, and that's the reason. Maybe I could just dodge it that in the rule book. I think you can move within a card. Um, uh, without... But while being exposed. Uh, where are we? Move within a card. Actually, that's a new... That's a new instruction then. Okay. Yeah, so we'll see on the movement actions there. That's further down. Uh, there's not a... There's a move to or from cover. There, that's what I was looking at. There's not a move within a card. And I think that's just what it's been changed to, I want to say. Yeah, because there's not there's not a move to or from cover here. So yeah, here we go. It tells you here. Yeah, that's a good move. So move within a card, cost one, it's automatic, any secure staff, any good order unit, it's got to be one, it'll be certain lats will be able to do it. Place the unit in the desired area of its card, under a cover marker, out of cover, a separate area of an urban com combat card, and mark it as exposed. Um if it's already exposed, you can do that already. That's my understanding. It doesn't restrict us. It would say that um, it would have to be any good order unit not exposed. So, okay, so let's let's do that then. Let's seek cover for the squad. So the HQ is given the, the squad an order to seek cover. And that's going to take him down to two actions left. Um, he's getting a three card draw. Uh, He's wine quality, so that's that's a benefit too because the, the platoon HQ would be green, but it's actually the squad that's seeking the cover, isn't it? Yeah, so he's getting a three card draw here for a fine cover. There's only one cover possibility on that card, but it's just basic cover. So here we go, draw three cards, and there we go. Good. So we got the cover that we needed. So a cover marker. I've not got any line here. There we go. And I think I'm going to spend that last point and then, well, sorry, not the last point, I had two left. Save the last one and put um, the first platoon HQ underneath that cover as well. I know that means it's four steps under it, but he gets to draw, he gets a plus one for being under the cover for drawing his cards, you know. And it would only be a minus one because it's minus one per steps above three under the cover marker. And again, there's no enemies about. What can go wrong? <laughs> uh, okay, that's first platoon finished. Second platoon is done. Third platoon didn't get activated. All good. So XO and CO, sorry, CO, XO and first sergeant have both got three save commands. Oops. Um, well, they're going to activate and then get one each. I know I'm meant to do one of these a turn. I should probably do it that way. It does say it in the rules. So I'll do the XO first. I, you can see that it's probably... 
you could do them both. It's not going to cause an issue. I don't think that one. However, maybe, maybe, might be some time, but it could. So I want the first, well, I kind of want the first sergeant to stay there and bring that letter team up. Or do we move the first sergeant back? I don't think so. Well, what do you want from General Initiative? I wouldn't mind one there to do that, and then it saves the platoon's commands. And I suppose I wouldn't mind one here to move across to there, and then I wouldn't mind one there to move up to there. So you kind of are looking for three. Well, hold on here. No, 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 that doesn't work. Well, it does. I can move that. Right. That's annoying. What was I about to say? An interruption. I had a phone call for 10 minutes or so. I was about to say what I could do is, and then I forgot. Oh, yeah, I think, I think I've got it. Um, yeah, I've got the XO. So what I could do is move him across there and give him the order to move back into that card. And... Um, yeah, it's a pity we've not got... Oh, hang on, hang on. The third Platoon HQ still gets an activation. Wait, 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 wait. I'm forgetting it. It gets an initiative activation, doesn't it? Or is that how you print it, uh, we call it? So let me put my XO back just now and let's look at our sequence of play here. Um, so we had done... CO HQ impulse, we've done the platoon HQ impulse, we're now on the initiative segment. The CO HQ was already activated, so we can forget about that. The platoon HQ impulse, however, um, this is the initiative impulse, if you like. Uh, select a platoon HQ that was not activated, draw an action card and give it the modified number of initiative commands. Right, so I've skipped by that. Didn't forget that before, did I? No, I think we've always managed to activate all the platoons before. So we'll draw a card and hang on, third platoon is not under cover, no. So he's going to get um, the small number, but he's going to get a minus one to this. Uh, and I want to say this has not got a minimum of one, but I might be wrong. We'll see what we get, what we get first. He gets a two, so that's going to be a minus one. So he's only going to get one command. Um, I need to double check. I, th I think you can get a zero with that one, though. Can't you? I think any initiative you can get a zero. It's only the activation ones. Uh, so he gets he gets one. So he's activated and gets one command. So he's got three commands. So we can actually probably do something with him. Yeah, but do we want to? I, I kind of like the idea of the COXO moving across there, sending an assault team back there. However, then we're past the point of being able to use the third platoon, aren't we? So I can't then order this unit to uh, supplement the squad or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do that. I can't do that. So I actually don't think we're going to do anything with the third platoon then. So I'm just going to save his three commands, but at least he, he got an extra command there. And I'm going to go back to activating our XO, giving him the one command. And I'm going to spend one command on moving him across to here. And mark him exposed. Then I'm going to spend another command from taking him down to two to order this assault team across to here. Uh, mark him exposed. It's just to try and put our squads back together. You can see three two putting up here. He's got a step loss, and obviously that's where this litter team down here kind of comes from. Does that mean... Because the litter team's closer to that squad. Yeah, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Let's take that back. <laughs> Why don't we send that assault team up to there? But then there's nobody to put together. Because I put two HQs away. <laughs> well, we could bring the XO up there. Next turn. Yeah, I'm going to do that instead. Because this assault team could supplement this squad. And this litter team, if we get the time to be able to do it, could supplement that squad. And it's closer to that than what that is. Yeah, makes sense. So I'm going to send use the XO to send them up there instead. Mark exposed. 
and uh, yeah, and then the Exo's got two commands left. Just going to save them, yeah, because he can't now move. And once he gets once he gets an extra one next turn, he's got three commands. He can go up there, join that squad up, and then we've got yeah, we're putting things back together. That's what we're doing here. We're just uh, sorting our guys out. Okay, um, so that was the CO XO. Right, so first sergeant gets a command and he's now on four. So remember, he can only. Oh no, I tell you why, he can save nine, can't he? He's a veteran. He'd be a veteran. Um, yeah, that's the problem though, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. Well, wouldn't it be better going back to the, sending him back to the, I think it would be better doing it. He can always come back up here, just leave the machine gun there. So he could use one command to come down to the staging area, a second command to rally the litter team, and then a third command to send the litter team forward. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, let's do that. So he uses one command to come down in the staging area. Uh, yeah, see, I didn't mark that guy exposed before, but I feel like I should here. <sighs> oh, that's interesting. Because if he's not exposed, I could move him back. Right, I need to know the answer to this. Let me put him back there just now. Because I'm running short of time. We're at an hour though, so yeah, I was hoping to go into the enemy stuff. Well, the enemy stuff is probably just going to be the draw of the HQ card, isn't it? I don't know. Unless anything happens there, nothing else is going to happen. Um, let me just see about this staging area a bit. Okay, I looked all about a little bit on the forums and the rules. Um, got a bit lazy though in the end and just thought I'd chuck a question out there about... Um, if a unit moves from row one to the staging area, should it be marked exposed? If the answer comes back, yes, and it does kind of mean that's what our team is here, isn't it? Because I moved it from here to here and then decided it wouldn't be exposed. But now I'm feeling slightly uncomfortable moving the first sergeant back to there. Um, so what I'm going to do is, because I want to get this video finished... I'm going to move my first sergeant. I'm going to give him one action, down to three. And then I'm just going to leave the heavy machine gun there. He's going to move down to here. Now, if I find out the answer is yes, they are marked exposed, that limited team, what, sorry, limited action litter team should be in here. Um, so what I would be doing, I wouldn't be moving the first sergeant here, I'd be moving him here, okay? So, but with my belief that... Uh, yeah, I, I don't feel that sure about this. Um, but I'm going to stick with the fact that if you move into a staging area, you do not become exposed. I know moving from here to here doesn't expose me. But, to be honest, moving from there to there, I'm I'm not sure. And it may be clear in the rules. I've, I've said that in my comment, uh, my question. Um, and maybe it's not. Maybe it's uh, something out there that might come to your attention. Um... So let's just say it's not, and like I say, if it is exposed, then he's now down here exposed beside this water team. And then what he's then going to do is send the water team. Yeah, that's right, because we want the water team to join up with that. So then he's going to move the water team up to here. We might as well put it under the cover, actually. Uh, it's going to be marked exposed, though. So I'm going to have to do a bit of stacking here, because if he's going under cover... Yeah, that's fine. It's not, a, it's not a big stack, so just because the water team is exposed, he's not. Um, that was another action, take me down to two. Now, if I'm not exposed, like I'm showing here, well, if you're not, you should be just allowed to do it, Grant. Okay, I'm going to do it, and then if I find out all that's wrong, what I'm going to do is put the first sergeant back to here, Mark him exposed and give myself another point back, another command back. 
That's him down to one now because he's going to make that move up to there and he's going to go uh, in here as well. Yeah, I might as well. So he's under the cover, exposed with a letter team. But I'm not quite sure if that's all legal or not. So the results are that is legal and everything's good. And I've got one command saved. Or the first sergeant's still down here exposed. And I've got two commands saved. Okay, so if I get the answer back and it says... Um, I was okay, have I got time to... A bit push for time now. Yeah, I've got another little bit. So I'll see if I can finish this turn. Might give it. Might give time for Shania to answer my question. <laughs> Who seems to be the one that's on the ball? However, I dare say they do have uh, a real life and things like that. So, so maybe not. Um, we shall see. I might. I might. I'll just check before I finish this part and uh, and and close the record on just to see. And then we can put it back together without having to try and remember what's what. So that is all our impulse is done, isn't it? Uh, the thing is, would that have affect? No, it wouldn't. This, none of this will affect the general impulse. So what we kind of want for the general impulse now, really just, we're just going to take this on board, this casualty. Yeah, I don't think I need anything else. So all we need one. I mean, you can get a zero here though, so... That's where we're at though, eh? We've done all the platoons, we've done the CO staff. Yeah, so general initiative draw, unmodified small number, and then we get three. Well, there you go, that's going to be too many, I think. Um, So I've got a three. Right, well, first one, uh, we are going to pick up, the squad's going to pick up that. Second platoon HQ is going to have to order it, I think. Uh, what do I need? The action menus. Yeah, and seeing that you're not seeing the details on that now makes me kind of want to read the rule book. Uh, oh, I'm at that bit anyway, good. Uh, what do I want to do? Pick up, don't I? There we go. I was right at it. So, there we go. H, this is a movement command, isn't it? Yeah, so use recipient experience. Pick up load and unload and bark. It's one, it's on a Mac. Any HQ or staff is the, uh, what is it, originator. And any good order unit is the recipient. So have an inference unit, pick up items from the card or from a different unit, or load, unload. And remember that you can unload freely. So when I move on to the card that matters, which is that casualty collection point, I'll just automatically drop it. I think that's right. So, yeah, it's all straightforward, there. I hope, anyway. So, he is exposed, but there's no talk of him needing to be... Now, if he was... It says mark any infantry units involved exposed. So, if he was not exposed at this time, by picking this casualty up, he would now become exposed. But he was already anyway, so... I'll just tidy all that up. And these are both exposed. Uh, so that uh, that was one of our initiatives, and we we can't move anything like any of them because they're exposed. Uh, no real need to find cover at all, is there? Oh, hang on, hang on, that's an assault team. Yeah, well, yeah, we want to join him up with him. Yeah, we can do that. As oh no, we can't. Yeah, that's why we need that XO to come back across, don't we? Because we need a we need a HQ or staff to to give the order for a um supplement squad, don't we? Supplement squad, any HQ or staff it needs to be to give the order. And we can't move that guy across because he's exposed, so we yeah, we can't do any of that. That is the COXO, isn't it? No, it's COHQ. There's COXO. Yeah, he's here. So it's him we kind of want to move up. Well, the COHQ would do it as well, but depends where we want him to be. Um, yeah, so just leaving that, I don't think we've got any use for these other commands. Uh, I mean, I suppose I could search for cover here. I don't really see the need but 
Yeah, let, let's just do it just in case. You never know what these. I'm not sure how the counter attack works. So, so I'll use one more uh, search for cover here. That's the COX. So he's green. So he's going to get a four minus one. So he's going to get a three card draw to search seat cover. One, two, three. Oh, he just gets it. So we need another cover marker. There we go. Um, so he's found cover in there, I suppose. Uh, we've got one command left. Um, no, I just, I don't really have a, a use for it, I'm afraid. No, okay, I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to let it burn then, so. It's a pity, but there you go. Right, moving on, let's get this uh, finished. And then I can get away and hopefully I might get a part in later today. And uh, yeah, but I'm off to bed early again tonight for work. So this is probably... Yeah, if I get a, if I get our part in later, then that'd be good. I might not though. Um. So that's general. Yeah. Okay. Here's a big one. Enemy HQ event phase. Enemy higher HQ event segment. All right. Here we go. Oh, good. No. Right. So that's that's one skip. So we've got eight, nine, and ten still to come. Uh. Right. I think we can just breeze through this next part though. Although we do have the capture segment. So there's no enemy activity checks, there's no enemies. 3.5 mutual capture and retreat phase. Uh, the bullet three of the capture segment as enemy casualties on unoccupied and friendly occupied cards are captured as per 8.15. Like I say, should be 8.151. Um, we just capture them automatically. So we're going to take these two off of there and we're going to... Yeah, I guess we're putting them in there. That's only about, I mean, they're casualties, but... Yeah, I think I think that's it. And like I say, it was no PCs on it, no enemies on it, and we've got friendly units on it. So, I think that's good. I was going to look up 8.115.1 again, but... Eh, maybe I should. Is it 8.15? I think so. 8.50.1, offensive mission enemy casualties are automatically captured if a card is unoccupied, no enemy units or PC markers, or friendly occupied, or friendly occupied. Enemy casualties are automatically captured if their card is unoccupied, no other enemy units or PC markers, or friendly occupied at the end of the mutual. That seems a bit odd, is that? how the rules were before. Well, that would have meant we captured these guys already. That seems a bit strange though, doesn't it? Just going to look up the old rule book, see what, it, see what it had for that. Right, maybe that's because I can't find a step where it, um, where it actually, um, what I'm trying to say, um, captures enemy casualties in the old rules. Mutual capture and retreat phase. Yeah, I, d I don't see a but I don't see a part where it talks about capturing casualties, which rings a bell to me. It makes it me wonder how how you used to go about that. Oh, hang on, we don't. No, that's the enemy that don't capture our casualties. I don't know. Right, I'm going to leave that with you guys. Hopefully somebody will give me something there. Um, yeah, well, it's clear in the rules here. Well, I'd, uh, it is clear, but I wasn't reading it that way. I thought we had to have something on the card, but it does actually say that enemy casualties are automatically captured if their card is unoccupied, which in brackets has got no other enemy units or PC markers. So, even if we didn't have anybody there, if they were just sitting on that car without a PC marker or an enemy unit, we would automatically capture them. Which does seem a little bit odd. I would have thought we needed a friendly unit on there. But it does carry on, or friendly occupied at the end of the mutual capture and retreat phase. So, in actual fact, 
it could have enemies on it and we could be occupying it. Mm, is that all right? Is that right, guys? That suggests to me that it could have a PC marker on it. It could have an enemy on it. We could have a friendly unit on it. It's got a casualty on it. We capture it. I think. That's, if, I, if I'm reading that right. Seems a little bit odd, that one. Okay. Well, it looks like we're good to capture them now, the way we've got it. That's how I would have thought it worked, but the way it's written in the rules suggests slightly differently to how I would have thought it. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move on, get this done. Um, so that was capture segment, retreat segment. There's no need for any of that. We'll get to some of that later, no doubt. Combat, vehicle, fire mission update, potential contacts. No, there's nothing to do. Pinned recovery segment, we've nothing pinned. Combat effects segment, nothing to deal with combat wise. Um, then we clean up, we move our expose markers. One, two, three, let's see, there's maybe a couple more. Yeah, there was two, there was one on the XO there, and there was one on the first sergeant and that letter team. Um, that's everybody else. Hang on, hang on. That could be one. Yeah, it is. First platoon HQ. Uh, right, I think that's, I think that's everybody in it. Uh, hang on. They're not marked expo. Ah, I took the one off that, of course, yeah. That's fine. Okay. Um, nothing else to remove. Oh, good. I just VOF PDF. We're still at contact because of the mines. Yeah, all running smoothly. Okay, let me just double check, see if I might have had a reply to see if we can fix that bit, uh, if we've got it wrong. Uh, okay, no answer as of yet, so that's maybe a bit, asking a bit too much. Uh, like 15 minutes gone by or something. Um, so like I say, the first sergeant may be down here. He'll then not be exposed because that would have came off the end of turn. Uh, if he is down here, he'll have one extra command left saved. Um, however, if it is right, if they don't become exposed, then it'll be where he is. All good. Right, move that on to turn eight. And yeah, we're still cruising. Again, just to worry the, the counter-attack now. Next turn, we're just going to... We've got this to move down, get to the casualty collection point. Couple of unit uh, things to supplement. Squads, hopefully, get that done. Uh, tidy up our, our team, yeah, our company. Okay, I'll hopefully be back later for another part. Um, if not, uh, it'll be tomorrow. Uh, really enjoying it up to now. Feel a bit more relaxed now. Um, there's a bit of clunkiness. And, and to be honest, I haven't watched through. I'm watching through part six just now. So this is part ten. So I've got seven, eight and nine <laughs> still to watch. And I know seven was kind of messy. Nine ended up being a bit messy because I forgot about starting part eight and yeah um but um yeah okay i'm, I'm enjoying it anyway I, it's a pity there's not more happened but i'm sure we'll see that as we start the, the next mission i'm sure it'll get uh, it'll get more interesting okay i'll get away for now cheers